Today I've got my 2D6 back on the bench again. Today I'm going to try to solve the problem of my compact flash card in this computer only giving me 504 megabytes. That's a real typical issue on these older computers. The BIOS just can't address more than 504 megabytes. No matter how big of a drive you put in, that's all DOS is ever going to see. DOS 6.22 should support up to 2 gigabytes, I think, per partition. But really, 504 is all you see. I can't even create multiple 504 megabyte partitions. So let's see what we can do to solve this problem. So for my research, to solve this problem, the XT IDE Universal BIOS is going to be the trick. You can find this at xtideuniversalbios.org or just Google for it. Basically what it says it does is it allows old computers to use large ATA or compact flash drives. And looking here at the feature list for IDE controllers, virtual devices via serial port, PIO transfers, hard disk auto detection, I mean, this has got tons of features. None of these things are built into my 286. And here's a whole list of the different BIOSes they have available. They have some for 8088s and 8186s, and then they have 286 ones. Now, this part of the page is the best descriptor of how to use this. It says that you basically just flash the BIOS onto a EEPROM and then you install it into a card that has an EEPROM socket. And it talks about things like network cards being a common one that will be perfect to use. Here's a PCI network card. As you see, it has the EEPROM socket here. Obviously, I won't be able to use this in my 286, but I actually have one just like this, but an ISA version. So initially at that other website, I didn't find any binaries to download. So I Googled around a little more, and it seems like this Google um, code archive is the best place to find them. If you click on downloads on the left here, you can see that there are some beta versions of the BIOS that have been compiled on the 2013. So it's a little old, but I'm going to bar flash one of these and see how it works. Inside the downloaded zip file, you see that there's several different bin files here. These are the different BIOSes. So I have my EEPROM in the programmer here, but this is one I took out of the 286. So this is definitely not blank. So I picked up this really dirt chip EEPROM eraser from China. I think it was $14 shipped. So the chip's in the drawer. I'm just going to put it in and I'm going to put it in for 10 minutes and see what happens. Okay, try number two. I had this in for another 10 minutes, so a total of 20. And sure enough, the blank check is successful. So here we are. Yes, blank check is good. To flash this XT IDE BIOS, you know that there are two versions as we saw on the website. There's the 8K version and there's a 12K version. I did some reading and the 12K version is supposed to be flashed onto a 16K EEPROM, which I don't have. And the 8K version is supposed to be flashed onto an 8K EEPROM. Now, if you know a little bit about how EEPROMs work, if you have a larger one, you can't simply just put the 8K image onto a 32K and stick it at the front. Because if you stick that into a card that's designed to use an 8K, it's not gonna read the beginning of the EEPROM. It's actually gonna read further down in a different section. And that's just the way the address lines work. So I am using 32K EEPROMs and I've done some troubleshooting and it seems like the only BIOS that I can use is the AK image. And if you look here at the EEPROM programmer when you first load it, it goes into the slot zero. But if we look here at this little cheat sheet here, uh, 32K EEPROM is seven FFF length. That's the total size. And half size is, well, it's actually 8,000. So, so half size would be 16K, a quarter, which is 8K, is 2,000, and then three quarters is. So because I'm not exactly sure where my card is going to be reading the 8K from, you actually need to load the 8K image into all four of these slots here. And that's because I'm using a 32K. So as you can see on the computer here, it starts at 0000. And if you scroll down, and I scroll down to 2,000, uh, it will start again. So there's this blank space here, which is just nothing. It's all filled with zeros. And then here we go at 2000 and it starts all over again. And at the end of the AK BIOS is an 83. So it's all zeros and then you have an 83. That's at one FFF. So essentially what you have to do is you have to select it all in here like this. You go up to the top. I'm not going to bother right now. And you do copy and you scroll down to 2000 like this and you click and then you hit paste and you have to do that again at 4000 and at 6000 so that's essentially putting four copies of this 8k bios onto the 32k eprom now i was trying this with the 12k bios and i made a 32k version by replicating it over and over again when i put those into my card it didn't work at all the 8k one is going to work for now 
front of the camera we have three cards that all have an EEPROM uh, socket slot on them. These are the ones I had in stock. Now the EEPROM is installed on this card and unfortunately it doesn't work. It doesn't appear to do anything, but this in here does work. So let's go take a look at what that looks like. And we're going to install this card into any slot. It is an 8-bit card. There we go. So when you get the XT IDE BIOS running on your computer, the first thing you need to do is go into the computer's native BIOS and disable the hard drives in here. Because the XT IDE is like a will search for the drives and kind of is a hard drive BIOS on its own, if you leave this configured, you'll have two hard drives configured and they'll conflict with each other. So go into there and disable it. So when the XT IDE BIOS is running, um, when the computer boots up after it finishes checking RAM and does like the floppy drive seek, then you'll see XT IDE pop up. And this uh, particular BIOS does support up to four drives on two different controllers. So there's my SD to compact flash adapter. It's funny he calls it that, but it's to IDE. And the other thing that happens is you get these things at the top. So we have floppy drive A, a hard drive C, COM detect, which is for booting off an emulated serial drive, and then ROM boot, which I think boots to option ROMs. Now, one thing to consider is as XTE IDE boots, it will always boot off the C drive and it will not boot off the A, even if you have a boot disk in the drive. So if you want to boot off the A drive, when you see this prompt come up, you got to push A and then it'll boot off that. Otherwise C is just the default. And rebooting normally would boot directly off the C drive unless you push A. So here in F disk, uh, the SD card that's in here is an eight gigabyte card, but it was first formatted as a 504 megabytes. That was when I was using the BIOS. Now if we push four for display, you can see here the 503 megabytes, but look, it's now detecting it as the full size. So let's delete the partition. Primary DOS, volume labels, oops, volume label 286. Am I sure? Yes, primary DOS position. Okay, so we're going to create a partition. Now, DOS 6.22, which is what I'm using, only supports 2048 megabytes as the maximum partition size. So when it asks, do you want to use the entire size, you have to push no. Otherwise, it's going to try to make a partition that is 7,578 megabytes. That's clearly not going to work. So create a primary DOS partition. Okay, 2047. I'm sorry, that's, I guess, what it wants. So we'll hit the enter on that. Primary partition created. And we're going to exit and reboot, and then we're going to format this drive. All right, so we're back here in DOS, and I'm going to format C slash S. That's on my newly created... 2047 megabyte partition. There we go, formatting 2047.31 megabytes. What you can do is then I can use up the rest of the space by creating extended DOS partitions. All right, so everything is good, and uh, make sure if you're having trouble booting, when you check your partitions, make sure the C drive is set to active. But my C drive here, which is 2047 megabytes, boot drive works perfectly. And then I have an extended DOS partition here for the remaining space. And if we press enter, you can see that's the D, E, and F drive. And uh, those are the sizes of those. So again, even the extended DOS partitions have a limit. Each logical partition can be 2047 megabytes. That's just a fat limit. But essentially, everything is working great. You can see here, I still have over two gigabytes free. Well. That's the XT IDE BIOS in a network card inside my 286. It was a little bit of work to figure out how to get it working because I, there's the 12K BIOS and the 8K one and how to flash it in multiple pieces and all of that. But once I figured out which card to use it on, which was that old network card, and to use the 8K BIOS, it's now working great. And this computer is so much more usable than it was before now that I have tons of space on it. And of course it's really fast because it's an SD card. Anyways, if you found any of this useful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. You can subscribe for more videos and uh, put any comments or questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Bye.